They gonna love me for my ambition. The Joe Budden podcast has gone viral over the weekend again with clips of Dr. Umar. In my opinion, Dr. Umar is one of the best like personalities to ever exist in the content space. Whether you agree or disagree with him, the way he carries the conversation, he's actually obviously very educated. He has a bunch of degrees. He's studied all the stuff that he talks about. But his opinion is very controversial because it's very like pushing that narrative of the black empowerment agenda but to the point that it comes off racist because he's like, yeah, okay, you shouldn't date a white person. Like, he doesn't almost believe in love. It feels like you know, and it shows. And then there's because, the homophobic stuff. And the yeah, yeah. So stuff. shout out to Dr. Umar though. He was on a Joe Rogan podcast. Uh, Joe, my bad. Joe Budden podcast over the weekend, and this was highly anticipated. Highly anticipated. I was waiting for this all year. There was rumors of this happening, and this is the clip right here. We're gonna play two clips. This is the one of him talking about Eminem. Dr. Umar has said that Eminem cannot be considered the best rapper of all time because Eminem is white. He's not an African, and that would be considered white supremacy. <laughs> Listen to this. God bless. Issues, no non-African can ever be the best of anything African. Well, you're at the top of the answer, white supremacy. Yes, that's white supremacy. Yes, that's white supremacy. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Umar. But I disagree. I do too. Because I'm Dominican. In the Dominican Republic, Dominicans don't make the best chicken. It's the Chinese. You go every this fucking. I say pica pollo is the best thing in DR. I'm about to spit on it. Bro, no you go to the fucking chicken spots in DR. The best fried chicken is the Chinese people cooking that chicken. They speak Spanish better than me. They speak Spanish better than. They've adopted the culture. You know, you can't. Is his argument is not valid. It's not valid. Because Eminem right now, is arguably the best rapper of all time. If it's just based off skill, yeah, I can see that argument. I don't say that. A lot of people say that. Yeah. He's top three to me. I can see that. Yes. Him being white doesn't... Disqualify Doesn't his disqualify talent. him. Yeah. Like, but no, his argument is this. I, and I see what he was trying to say, but he gets so emotional, he doesn't get to the point. All right. So he's saying that when you're rapping, the concept of rap yeah. requires an understanding and a lived experience of what it means to be a person of color, what it means to be black in America. So when you're rapping... To be good at rapping is not only the technical ability to rap, it's also understanding that reality and having to live with the oppression of being black. They come together to make one. Yeah. So if you don't have both things, you're not the best. And acknowledging someone as the best who doesn't have both components is a disservice, especially if they're a white person because it's a part of white supremacy. You're only acknowledging that they're the greatest because they're white. You're ignoring the fact that, you know, if you weren't white, I probably wouldn't hold you this high up. That's his argument. Yeah. I don't agree with it. Because I know right now the best person in MLB baseball, which is a white sport, it's an American sport, is a fucking Japanese nigga. Yes. Shohotani. Right now, the NBA, the uh, basketball was made by white people. The best NBA player, it, and I think it's American white people, or it's Canadian, I can't remember. The best basketball player on the planet right now is a European is a European black man. Yeah. You, you could debate about it. They say it's Jokic, Embiid, or Giannis, one of the three. None of them are American. It's crazy. And then also, with Eminem, I feel like he's just so skilled where, like, that's the only white rapper. Eminem's the only white rapper where people have ever really, like, put him in that necessary, like, oh, he passes everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Eminem's on camera, like, freestyling in, in Detroit uh, battle rap, saying the N-word, literally, on camera. They've pushed it aside. You know, it was almost as if they adapted him. How people say, like, you know, oh, he's invited to the barbecue. He's yeah. one of us, et cetera. There's a play on the Raiders right now. They're treating like that on the internet. You know, yeah. the uh, He's a, I think he's a defensive Crosby, lineman. Crosby, I forgot. Yeah, Crosby, yes, Crosby. Crosby, yep. So, and then also you have, you know, Eminem adopting, like, he's so, like, anti, like, white, white culture. That is crazy. Yeah, he, like, he came out, he was one of the first white rappers to come out against Trump. Bro, he would come out, he comes out against Trump, he flames Britney Spears, like all these like pop culture, like he hates the pop culture, white people, mm -hmm. like he, he would flame the, at them, like it's insane. He right? hates white America, he hates made a whole white song America, about it. like he, I think he's beefing with Kid Rock, like he like hates all that shit, like it's crazy. He's he's like reminding people, hey, I'm, a, I'm fucking with you guys. Like, I'm a nigga. I'm, I'm, a, I'm real, I'm, I'm real, right? And then there was this thing with Snoop Dogg. Where I think one Snoop Dogg one time said like, he said two things. He said like Eminem's a nigga. Like oh he's a he's a he's a he's a really he's with nigga. The shits. He's with the shits. But then there was one time when Snoop Dogg didn't even have Eminem in his top ten. Remember? Because he was like oh yeah. people don't like we don't really listen to that cracker like that some shit like that. 
And then Eminem was like offended, like, bro, we're supposed to be friends, cool. Like, what is this? Like, this is mad weird. And they they came together, they had like photos together, they met up with Dr. Dre, et cetera. They ended the beef, like a, it was a miscommunication, supposedly. But then Snoop Dogg's take for like the ranking of Eminem was kind of like what Dr. Umar was kind of saying. Because of the fact that he was white, he was kind of ranking him lower. You know, because he can't be, it can't be a white man that's like the best rapper of all time. Blah, 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 I don't know. But then I think Snoop Dogg's kind of retracted that statement. Because um, technical ability is one of the greatest rappers of all time. When it comes to technical ability, yes. 100%, bro. But when it's what you're talking about and what your shared experience is, yeah, you rather prefer someone with just as good as technical ability, but they have your shared experience. Especially because I guess, you know, obviously the, the precipice of the creation of hip hop and rapping was off black oppression. Black oppression and also black culture. Even if you want to go back to music, you know, black jazz artists, yeah. you know, black rock stars with fucking um, Little Richard. You know, it comes off of all of that, yeah. you know. And then the actual creation in New York, you know, I think in the Bronx, I want to yeah. say. My with like the Puerto Ricans in the Bronx and the Dominicans in the Bronx and the black people in the Bronx. Yeah, and there was an argument that um, this nigga forgot his name, the, the, Jewish, the Jewish exec. Um... The one with the glasses, he 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 came up with Rockefeller. Um, oh, Leo, no, Leo, 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 Leo Korn. Leo Korn. He said that um, there's 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 um, links to rap starting in the 70s. Yeah, there was actually like early signs of it. I forgot where though. I think it might have been in Miami. But I I get what you're saying. My thing is this. This is why this is a shitty argument through and through. How do you explain Drake logic and J Cole? Do you only you only half matter? Yeah. What are your shared experiences? Because the reality is Drake grew up with his mother in his youth. Yeah. And it's very evident when you go back to those Degrassi interviews, he acts like a whitewashed suburban kid. Yeah. And his Jewish side is very evident. And that immediately disappears when he goes to Houston and starts living with his dad. And he was obviously on and off with his mom and his dad. But when he started, when he went to Houston, that's when you really saw it. J. Cole had a similar concept and he speaks about it in his music. Yeah, I'm living with my mom and she's white. But when I'm outside, I'm with niggas. Yeah. I don't really know my pops. And then Logic bitches about the white and black thing every fucking week. So yeah. it's like, yo, where do you put these people? Like, you're going to throw them off the list? It yeah. don't make sense. Like, this this little arbitrary system that niggas is using makes no sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Because also, it's just about who's the best, like, the best output, the best music, you know, the best rapping. Right now, it's been Drake for, what, 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Overall, all time, Eminem's up there. So it's crazy. But I, I love Dr. Umar because he's very thought-provoking, whether you agree or disagree with him. You know, he has his takes and he stands on them, you know, but uh, I'll end it there, actually. We'll, uh, I definitely recommend people to go watch the Dr. Umar interview with Joe Bunnings on Patreon. I think during the week it might drop on YouTube eventually, but he ended the year strong. Joe Bunnings, he had the Nicki Minaj interview on Patreon and then he dropped the Dr. Umar interview back to back. Very strong. I think it's in two parts. So you got plenty of Dr. Umar content. I heard it's like five hours, yeah. Yeah, I would love to... Um, Conversate one day with Dr. Umar on that camera. Be that crazy. would be insane. I think I heard he has a fee though. Probably like when he goes on people's podcasts. Probably 10, 15K. Yeah, so I might have to take out a loan to bring Dr. Umar in. <laughs> That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. <laughs> you gotta make it work. They gotta clip that shit up like crazy. <laughs> Nigga, I gotta come in here ready. Bro, I'm paying 10, 15K to get pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, cause Fuck out of here, bro. bro, that should be so insane, nigga. Cause it'd be co- it would just be me and this nigga Vic arguing with this nigga the entire bro, time. Bro, better, I'm in the background like this nigga don't make he, sense. He better come with gloves, bro. He better come with like, bro. oh, we can t- we can get some rounds with you, bro. Bro, the way he, when we get to the homophobia part, we can have a real conversation. Oh man, bro, he be saying some man. I was, and he speaks on it. He doesn't care. He talks about how um white people use um being gay as a means to deteriorate black masculinity. Yeah, and he's quick to call uh, black people coons. Like, he calls people coons out. He's like, he, he's like I was at the I mall and I that. saw three coons. Three coons in the, in the mall hiding. I'm like, whoa, whoa, the, what the <laughs> fuck? What, what the? How three did you spot them? Like, yeah, how did you know they were coons right away? Nah, that's crazy. Like, that nigga got a, he he got got a, a coon, coon radar. radar. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you just left me hanging. They gonna love me for my ambition.